Right then, we are coming towards an exciting segment that we have introduced to the Cricket News podcast this season, Rapid Fire Round. And there's a five-second window for you to answer the questions that I'll be putting forward. Some of them will be to just put you in the tough spot, but that's just a fun element of the game that we are trying to induce. So first things first, first cricket game you remember watching. Uh, my old man play a Sunday league game when I was about seven or eight. Nice, thanks. Last cricket game that you watched? Uh, CPL game this morning on nice. TV. Nice, brilliant. First childhood cricket hero? Brian McMillan, 92 World Cup. To the point, nice. Best cricket ground you've been to, and this in terms of experience, the atmosphere, and more importantly, the food. Atmosphere, first day at Edgbaston, food lords can't go past it. Unbelievable. All, all, the, <laughs> yes. all the stories are true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I wanted the confirmation on. Your best cricketing memory so far? Uh, uh, just seeing some of my boys perform at international cricket through the last, you know, 12 years that I've, that I've been a first class coach. I guess, you know, I get judged on trophies, but at the end of the day, you know, what makes me get up in the morning is seeing, you know, the players that I work with, you know, get better and, and, and fulfill some of their dreams, which, you know, allows me to have a fantastic job. So, you know, just the, the part of my players moving forward is probably what I, what I enjoy most. Spoken like a true coach. What's your one hot take in, on cricket that others won't be able to digest? Uh... Time management, probably around, you know, how slow cricketers are. You know, it's, it's just probably a <laughs> beam up on it. To, I, I get worked up with things like that if people aren't on time, probably. <laughs> that's that's one heck of a thing you mentioned. And speaking of that, we also have had this question that I put a little down, but I'm just going to ask you now that you have mentioned it, which New Zealand player, when you were with the team, was always late for breakfast? Oh, it's a good question. I'm trying to think quickly. There's a couple that I can remember. There was always early. Um, okay. But I, this, I think there's... Oh, I can't really remember, to be fair. Um, if, if As we're talking, I remember, I'll, I'll throw it in there. I'm trying to work through my head when we were at Southampton. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that there. answer. I'm, I'm yeah, looking I'll forward work through to, it as we go. I'm looking forward to a player I can relate to most in terms of life. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> now, well, I'm always early, so uh, that's probably the opposite. <laughs> Well, then, I, I won't be able to relate to you in any sense now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hamtik. But what's, what's been a tough cricket memory for you to take? Uh, probably not playing international cricket. Um, you know, that's probably the one thing that we all set out to do. And, you know, you want to get tested at, 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 at the highest level to, to see if you're actually good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but then to redirect some of those dreams and, you know, now my dreams obviously to try and coach an international side at mm -hmm. some stage in, in, yeah. in, in my coaching career. And so, the, you know, the fire is still burning. And, you know, hopefully when, whenever we have this conversation someday in the past, I don't have to give you the same answer around my coaching career. Definitely. And delightful for the way you've answered that one. Which, now coming back to the New Zealand team and staff discussions, we are obviously going to bring a lot of more topics. But... Which player was the life of the winning party? Trent Bolt's always up to something. Um, he, yeah. him and him and Saudi, um, and then you add a little bit of Wagner, and they look, you know, they formed such a formidable trio. Those guys, you know, on off yeah. the field, um, they always up to something. To be fair, but yeah, Bolty's look, he's busy. He's always up to something, and you know, um, he keeps people honest, which is always exciting to have a guy like that around the group. Definitely. Which coaching staff member was the life of the party? Come on, Heinrich. Oh, I've got big Shane, expectations. Shane Jurgensen is absolutely <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah. No, Jurgo is an absolute ripper. Um, he's, he goes for his 10K walks every morning, 5 o'clock. Um, you know, always up to something. Um, first man to, you know, to be out there, set up the warm-up stuff. Um very diligent in the way he operates. Um, first man to open a beer. First man to celebrate success after a long day. Um, you know, sit down, get the boys in recovery. Um, generally, the, the life of the coaching staff, I would guess, Shane Jurgensen. 
Yeah, yeah. Your best memory from the current tour to England? Yeah, probably just the uh, you know being in and behind the sanctum of Lords, um, unbelievable. Um, and then the first day at Edgbaston, hundred percent. That was the best day of cricket I've ever had in my whole life. Nice, nice to hear that. And now a little tough one. There won't be around if there aren't tough ones. But now let's ask this: um, as they do call it, the Fab Four, which is your pick: Kane, Williamson, Virat Kohli, Steve Smith, or Joe Root. How many can I pick? Only one. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that, oh, that's the fun part. Oh, she's like it's an unbelievable tough question there, um, and I. Yeah, I think you sell your short either way, whichever one you pick. Um, probably I've got to go with Kane, you know, just, just being <laughs> being being a New Zealander, um, you know, the yeah. way he operates, the, the, the record that he has, um, you know, winning trophies, um, being part of fantastic teams. Yeah, I've probably got to go with Kane. But, I mean, all four of those guys, you add people like the Villiers in there. Um, yeah, yeah. Good, good luck picking the, the, the ultimate winner to that one. Yeah, I mean, but you picked up a nice alley to walk into in that question. So I'm going to put you in a little more tough spot now. Your pick amongst Ross Taylor, Kane Williamson or BJ Watley? Oh, it just depends what you're looking for when you say your pick. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, what sort I'll, of I'll play it differently. You... Yeah, I'll, I'll play yeah. it differently. I'll, I'll probably think, you know, if you look at the consistency and the grit and determination that that I sort of, you know, grew up with. Um, and I know that yeah. BJ was born in South Africa, but look, I, I really enjoyed the way that BJ goes about his business. You know, pretty stubborn man around how he operates, you know, diligent worker, um, puts yeah. his head down um, and then he's shown you know in quite a few difficult situations across his career that that stubbornness uh, which is a great stubbornness to have when you need it um, when the chips are down you know comes to the fore and um, so out of those three I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll pick BJ um, yeah. to you know come out there and, and, and produce the, the goods as he's as he's shown over you know his career. Yeah, there was quite the atmosphere around him in that World Test Championship final. We obviously saw his interview just after the game and he was just so thankful to the journey that he had been part of. But quite frankly, it had been a huge part of that New Zealand side as well, you know, winning the games for them from situations where New Zealand might have thought, you know, okay, this game is not in our hand, but he's been that kind of a player for the team. Surely one to be missed out by world cricket and cricket fans as well. And now for some near future predictions, Heinrich? your dream T20 World Cup final this year? Which are the two teams will feature in that? I'd like to say that, um, you know, I'd like to see a replay of the World, uh, the One Day World Cup. Um, okay. Uh, just see if, if we can maybe, you know, turn the tables on that one. Um, but look, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a huge World Cup. Um, I think, you know, the conditions is going to be different with the IPL being just in, in front of the, the World Cup, obviously. So, yeah. you know, there'll be some different tactics um, on, some, on some different conditions. So it's all it's all going to be, you know, it's going to bring different teams into the equation that, you know, we haven't even thought of, which is exciting, yeah. you know, because um, the conditions are going to be a little bit more challenging. But I guess, you know, it'll be intriguing. Um, but hopefully um, we can replay that you know, one day World Cup final at Lords, and um, you know, somewhere in the UAE, um, turn the tables, which will, uh, you know, be a, a really good turnaround, won't it? Thanks for the hopes, Heinrich. Thanks for the four hopes <laughs> for all of India <laughs> and all the fans who will watch this. But yeah, okay. So, speak of that, your dream 2023 World Test Championship final. It would be so fitting if it's New Zealand and India again, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, you know, and to, I would love, give it, love for that to happen. Yeah, give it a replay. Um, you know, a couple of years later, um, you know, you never know. There might be a couple of players that's moved on from there. Um, you yeah. know, and, and and it might be a little bit of a different looking um, teams playing each other. But yeah. look, uh, I think there's quite a few people that's um, you know up for the challenge around trying to get there again on on both sides of the coin. Um, you know, I guess from an Indian perspective. You know, quite a few of, of the players feel like there's a bit of unfinished business there. And and I guess from a New Zealand perspective, you know, quite a few players would, um, you know, like to try and get um, two up on them, you know. So um, 
Um, one of my very good friends is the trainer of the Indian side, so you know it's okay. uh, it's always good to, to have a bit of banter. And that Nick Webb, yeah. uh, it's always good to have a little bit of banter in that space with him. Um, you know, he, yeah. used, he used to work with me when uh, at, at CD, he was my trainer there, so you know, I know mm. him pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I would. It would be lovely to watch uh, an India New Zealand final in you know sort of near future and it would be lovely for me to have that opportunity to text you as well with a little bit of a banter as you just mentioned.